Okay, my friends, I just got this from my very good friend Pedro, who gets all kinds of things in the scientific arena because he was with NASA and with the European Space Agency and, and, and just in, the, in that realm. So he's just consistently sending me stuff. And this was about the Nobel Prize being awarded to this guy for sequencing the genome of a Neanderthal. Now, so he gets the Nobel Prize for that. And here, here's what he did. This is in Stockholm, October 3rd, uh, 2022. Nobel Prize in Physiology of Medicine awarded to Swedish biologist Salante Pablo. The Nobel Prize Committee Stockholm Institute announced on Monday. Now, the scientist was awarded the prize for this, for his discoveries concerning the genomes of extinct hominins and human evolution. So extinct hominins means things that were pretty close to us, like the um, Neanderthals and so forth, but they're not here anymore. And human evolution, how do we get to be the way we were? Now, this is the committee's decision based on what he did. Now, I have some pretty serious information here that shows human evolution and extinct. I mean, I don't know. There's, I don't see anybody with no toes anymore. These are what we call the no toes. And I have tons of these. And, and this is a human lung that's turned into stone. And I uh, discovered the process of mud fossilization, which is long duration, hot water, salty floods. And see, you know, nucleophilic substitution and invasion of all the tissues, specifically collagen. Collagen causes feldspar. Feldspar is the number one mineral in the world. Right? I've got a lot to say about this. Now, and I went to um, Johns Hopkins University for genomics too. I mean, I'm not, not completely devoid of understanding here. So I am going to present my evidence to show my extinct dominance, which, oh, this sucker's heavy. It's got the same arch we have. It's got everything. It's got all the, but it has t it has springs. These don't have bones inside, and the toes were built inside the feet. They they, they have no toes. I call them no toes. Now I'm going to show you a bunch of other ones, and then I'm going to show you for the first time on live, sort of live, internet, the Oompa Loompa. All right, this is a modern human foot. It has a bone in the back, the calcaneus, and the tendon strap comes up to meet this bone that goes up to the leg. And then you have a series of bones and tendons that are, are able to move your foot around. That's a modern foot. All right, these are the no toes. There's no tendons in these. There's springs, and these are the springs. It still has the bone and the strap right here, the bone and the strap. Let's look at this a little carefully, just for a second. I have literally probably a hundred videos on that or more. All right, the toes would have been out here. When you step on your toes and it would push this up, that's a spring. You see it? It's a spring. And it's latched to this little tab. And that tab has a wire that runs up to this tab here. So when this turns, this pulls down. That pulls this wire in. This cavity accepts this spring. So you got a spring, then you got another spring, and then when it comes back down it lays flat again. So it's, it's designed to be a double spring absorptive mechanism. Plus it's got this bumper pad in between because it's going to come down. This is going to have to go and come back. It's got some kind of, I, I think they call it a gummite even, I'm not sure. It has another one of these little tabs here that came around. I don't know where that went. But this is the tendon. Now, look at this very carefully. That's the, what happens with a tendon when they break. They wrinkle. You see that? That's what I call a wrinkle zone. They just go because they're under tension. They're continuously held tight like that. And when you cut them, they, that's why you see places they have the wrinkle zone and then you see the clear tendon afterwards. Basically that's what this is right here. Now that's the calcaneus bone that's in the back of your foot. That's the cradle 
saddle, whatever you want to call it, where the bone comes down that your foot attaches to. Now, and as, I, I'm sure there's plenty of blood that can be tested. I'm done trying to do all this testing. Nobody cares. Nobody's paid one bit of attention. I've had not had one single, zero single questions from anywhere in academia. And I've tried everywhere. I mean, seriously, I've tried literally everywhere. All the top universities. Not one single question back other than just read chapter 26. <laughs> all right, these are all sort of humanish. I, I call no toes. This one I call the Oompa Loompa. <laughs> now you see this here? Piece missing? You see this piece missing? That's where the fibula comes down on the side. You have a tibia that sits here. Same thing here. And then this cradle in the back. You see this? They all have the same thing. I have a lot of these. They all have that same bump in the back so your heel doesn't fall off the back. It's buttressed up by that little that little high spot. Ooh, boy, this thing's heavy. You see it? Same thing. Whoops. You see it has the same thing. Now, this this thing here is absolutely, I mean, it's strange as hell, but it is what it is. It's a foot. And it has an arch. It has everything. And, and the, this is the actual skin. It died laying like this. Ooh. Back to the floor. Just like that. That's how I'm seeing this one. Now, gigantic as it is, and this is the skin. I'm going to put it in the microscope. We'll look at the skin on this one. And you can see the seams where they come together. Same like this. This skin is going to be basically the same. And it has the same sort of seams. That's what biology is. A lot of seams to biology. And then this one here, if you look at Tish's feet, her toes are coming to, to the side. They're not coming straight off the front. And that's what this is. You see how this is they're coming to the side? I always wondered, I said, why is that like that? But tissues are the same. See, this This is tissues' toes. Are, 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 they're going this way. They're not going straight out. Same thing with this one. They're going sideways. They're not going straight out. I had wondered about that for a long time. All right, this was a, a leg that Tish found. These are all the pins and springs and the the heel bone and the, the, the I mean, blah, 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 blah. it's everything. It's exactly what we saw before. That sits in the cradle, and um, it has like a plate that runs up the leg, and then bloody muscle tissues and so forth behind it. Totally different than ours. Now, I had three samples tested for DNA to see if they were human or not, and that's all I wanted to know. I didn't want any full sequencing or anything. And I worked with Helix Bio Labs, and Tom Pachenko, who I worked with, was one of the top people I've ever worked with. He was, he's a scientist. Now, I extracted the samples, so I didn't send him a big chunk of stuff and he took it out of there. I cleaned everything well, extracted it from deep inside, drilled down inside. I didn't take anything off the surface. And I will show you what I sent to him. And there was three things. There was a 36-inch tip, which is a fingertip, 36 inches long. When I show it to you, you're going to freak. The long that I think I've already shown you. And a mud tip, which is a fingertip that was about 8 inches long. But it's still giant. And here's what it... it they, he went through very, very well done. And I know he took some heat for it because he said absolutely 100% it was human. Excellent quality. See this? Excellent quality DNA sequence was obtained for the 36-inch tip sample and the lung sample. Now, the, and the, the mud tip was a little less, but still 100% human homo sapien. And these are the two areas they tested for, the mitochondrial cytochrome B and d loop. And they matched exactly the humans. And so this was back in 2015. This is a long time ago. No, not a single, I sent this everywhere. Nobody interested whatsoever. And all they, I'm, I know they assaulted everybody. I had CAT scans done from Jesse Garant and Associates, the nicest people I've worked with as well. These are true scientists. Jesse Garant and Associates, nicest people you could imagine. 
they did CAT scans, they did seven CAT scans, and, and they were, mud fossils is completely invaded, nucleophilically substituted. You can see the very shadows of things, but they're not as, a, as a, a, illuminating as if you had fresh tissue. So the mud ones, eh, they didn't, I didn't get a whole lot of detail, but enough for me, I could see it quite easily. And they did seven CAT scans for me, no charge, in the interest of, of science. And they do everything. I mean, they, they, were, they have all the top people in the world they do research for, uh, for um, Rolls-Royce and Pratt and & Whitney. And I mean, this is, this is some pretty hot stuff. Let me look it over here. Jesse Garan, Metrology Center. Recently become an approved aerospace CAT scanning supplier for Rolls-Royce, Raytheon, Pratt & Whitney, everybody. Five-star rating. These guys are top, top, top shelf. And like I say, all I had to do was pay to ship the stuff out and back. And they did all that cat scanning and, and stuff for free. And I appreciate it. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Fabio. You are a pleasure to work with. Okay, like I said, I have some background here in genomics. I took a genomics course with Steven Salzberg at uh, Johns Hopkins. Um, and he is an expert at ancient genomic DNA in, I believe it was woolly mammoths or something like that. And, um, you know, we corresponded back and forth. He was not receptive of my stuff, but I did learn something from his in, 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 the, in the genomics realm, because everything is, is uh, genomically oriented, but the genomes are products of bacterial enzymes. Gen genes don't just exist and never change and get altered. They have to be altered by some chemistry. Something in the water, something in the soil, something in the environment, a lot of times, is what damages or changes DNA and genetic expression. And now all of a sudden you have to call on something to do something different because it's in a new set of chemistry. That's basically what it is. Okay, so back to our Nobel Prize winner. He sequenced these genes. And here's what it says about what he did here. It says the scientist was awarded a prize for his discovery concerning the genome of extinct hominids in human evolution. How did we get to where we are now? Now, through his research, he accomplished what scientific community considered impossible. He sequenced the genome of the Neanderthal. He also made the sensational discovery of a previously unknown hominin, Denisova, the committee noted. I'd like to see about the feet on that, because it might be no-toes, who knows. The Swedish biologist also discovered that gene transfer, now listen to this, this is important to understand. He discovered that gene transfer had occurred from these now extinct hominids to Homo sapiens following their migration out of Africa 70,000 years ago. That's what he's saying. In modern humans, these genes define how their immune system reacts to infections. Pablo's research gave rise to an entirely new scientific discipline, paleogenomics. Now, let me tell you something about how your immune system works and how it reacts to different infections. All right, this is the key right here. Gene sequences. What's a gene sequence? Archaic gene sequences are really, really old code. A gene sequence is nothing more than program code. Trust me, I know 100% certain. It's nothing more than a programming code. And if it sits in a certain region of your DNA, it says the guy's going to have blonde hair or blue eyes or whatever it is. But there's a chunk there, and it says if it's programmed, and this is on, and that's off, and these two are on, and it's called methylation. And they're little, what they call CPG islands, they're program islands. And then they say, okay, program this to have the guy have blue eyes. And this is on, this is off, and these two are on, these three are off, and whatever it is. Boom. Done. Now, if you get exposed to something that damages you, a program will be created to make an immunity to that. Well, how does that work? How does that immunity work? 
the immunity has to be program a bacteria. Just because you have the code there, what the, what's that mean? That's nothing. The code is a zero, means nothing. So you could have a perfectly good gene and have a completely wasted immune system because you don't have the bacteria there to carry out the program. The bacteria are the factories, literally the factories that create the enzymes. Enzymes are the catalysts that do all the chemistry. And I'm telling you, that's just a fact. And now they have started to realize that the bacteria in your gut is exactly what Hippocrates said. It's the source of all disease. If you don't have the right bacteria, or you, you have too much of the wrong bacteria, either way, your body is going to be stressed and damaged, and you're going to be invaded. There's a layer called the interstitium now that they realize is this layer, and we're now going to call that just below that interstitium, or actually it's just above it. It's right on the membrane layer is where all of these enzymes wait. They just wait to attack. And there is a video that's it's called Your Textbooks Are Wrong. This is what your cells look like. It's by Go Call. I forget it. He's out in that California somewhere. And he, he shows the actual bacteria doing their job in there. Totally different than what is being taught in schools. And, and I understand it because it is all based on enzymes. And if you don't have the enzymes, you can't do the chemistry. It's not going to happen. I don't care what you, if your genes are working perfect, no, no enzymes, no job being done. Now, why would you not have the enzymes? Why? Well, they are produced by a little bacteria cell. That's all it does, is it makes one enzyme. One bacteria creates this exact enzyme. If this bacteria is not there, it's dead, that enzyme does not exist. All right, so if you don't have that enzyme, bacteria living in you, you've taken antibiotics, or you've been exposed to some toxin, or whatever it is, it's gone, you are invadable. And that's why people are getting so sick because there's a lot of a lot of nuances here that can also be attributed possibly to genetically modified foods because they kill bacteria in us. They cause damage to our bacteria. I believe. Roger. Hold on. Okay, that was a pretty good spot to get started to wrap this up. This is the Oompa Loompa foot. And back here is that cradle that I talk about. And this, this is where the blood supply comes down from the leg. And then there'll be some connective tissue in there as well. Now, I'm going to turn off the light because you have to have it dark to be able to see it. And here it is up in the microscope. And that's from a long distance off. But you can see the red blood and you see the white connective tissue in there. All right, now, I'm going to bring it a little closer. And then we're going to look at some other ones real quick just to finish this off. All right, blood can be gotten out of here extremely easy. All I did was just barely touch this, and a chunk of blood fell right off. I'm going to see if I can move it here. See, look at that. That, that chunk fell right off. That's blood. I can squ Look, it just mushes right around like blood. This, this whole area here is just saturated with blood, see? That whole area right there, I'm, I'm, I'm just making it into mush right now. Uh, if I turn the lights on, you'll see this is nice and red. It's pretty red and bloody. See? Now this over here is the connective tissue. And these connective tissues come up along with the veins and arteries and all that stuff. That's, that's an artery right there. Okay, this is on the other foot, the no-toe. This is just all blood bubbling out of here. And this is the fabric. Hold on, let me see if I can home it in a little closer. You see, this is, like I said, this is the bubbled up blood. This is the fabric that's on the, the skin. You know, and, and that's that right there. You see that right there? That's nothing more than um, leather. That's leather 
they coated the skin. I just put some water on there. Let's see. Now, it's real shiny right now, but um, that is nothing more than leather. And I, it's, it looks exactly the same on my belt. All right, here it is after it dries up. This is what it looks like. There's blood in there, and there's the these little uh, interstitial balls. All these little balls, these little black spots, are the anchors to anchor your skin to your body. That way you can stretch around and then you come back. Let me show you. All right, now this is the no-toe, the, the really clean-looking no-toe. This is some bloody area, and this is where the the interstitium is. And that's all these little tabby-looking straps are all over the top. Here's, here's what we're looking at right here. All right, there's scope right there looking down at that. Now, the whole thing is the same. If we went to the side, we got the same thing. Now, on the side, you can see, let me tune this in a little bit better. On the side, you can see that. Hold on, let me turn this right off. All right, that basically is what the fabric of skin looks like and hide. Let me show you my belt. This is what leather looks like when it's tan. It's the same sort of stuff. Now let me show you where a belt loop is. And you'll see, the, here, here down here, see? See right there? All of that's the fabric. Every one of these has a, a, a strap built into it. And that's what holds it, the ball in place. And that's why this can be flexible and bend like it does and stay and, and not break because these there's all these straps in here and you have the same thing in your body and all your skin so you can move around and uh, and that's that's what I'm showing you is these these skin tissues now let's look at the Oompa Loompa all right there's the Oompa Loompa it's exactly the same stuff it's collagens and they have trans transition into into different minerals and so forth and uh, you know there's uh, bloody areas there's these this one the the oompa loompa what we're looking at here is the oompa loompa and that one there is way way eroded basically i mean it's about done now but this is what happens to the skin now what i had to do with my other ones is i had to break down and drill down into these bloody areas to extract some blood to get it DNA tested. Hold on a second, let me show you the side. Alright, there's the side of the Oompa Loompa, which this is the blood that has drained down because this would have been on the bottom. You can see little red blood spots behind those tissue layers. And there is the Oompa Loompa right there. Now don't forget, this has the, this is where the fibula was. The tibia comes up here and the fibula sits down on the side and that's they break right off. Same, all of them, all of my, and this is the side that it was laying down on. And that was what we're looking at up here in the microscope. All right, you see, see that little bit red blood spot right there? I mean, they're all over the place. It's not like there's just one here and there. They're everywhere. And they, they, what happens is the blood leaks down. And it collects at the bottom and scabs over, and then you get stuff like that. Very easy to get blood out of this, no problem. So, what I'm getting at is, is it's nice to know these DNA sequences, but where did they come from? This is what I want to know. Are these relatives of ours? I haven't had these DNA tested. I had the, the lungs. Let me see what I have. I had a lung. I had um, a big gigantic hand, which was three feet wide, and I had another fingertip, which was three feet long, there's just one fingertip. What did I show you that? Okay, I'm just going to leave it at this. This is the fingertip that's in my yard. It's three feet long from here to here. That's the fingernail. <laughs> that's the pad that is in the, right behind the, the bone so that you don't scrub the next bone. These two are the blood supplies. That is the fingernail, and it was pretty well taken care of. And this is the actual grip skin, 
which is, uh, where is it? All right, well, grip skin is the stuff that's on your fingers, your toes. It has the ridges and the fingerprints and the sweat pores and all that. This is the piece I had to break off the edge of that finger so that I get down inside to where the blood is. This is the pad that's on top. It's called a, a keratinized, cornified, heavy-duty layer that it, it's just there's nothing there other than a layer of dense cornified skin and so you got to go down and get the blood and that's what I did I broke that piece off off of the edge here right here you see right there that's gone and all I did was a bang with a pretty heavy hammer and it popped right off because it's just barely like glued on there that's the layer, the membrane between your skin and inside. So that's that big fingertip. That was DNA tested. Excellent quality DNA, they said. And this was the DNA reports. You saw these. All right, now, I also had a hand done, which is this one. All right, that's the hand. And you left your, put your left hand out like this. You have this tendon that runs down. There's the bumper pad that runs around your hand. That's the cleave right in the center between the two pads of your hand. The thumb goes off this way. And I have the thumbs and knuckles, and I got all kinds of parts from this hand, from this, even from some from the feet. This is over three feet wide. I think this was almost four feet wide. Um, so I had this was DNA tested too. This wasn't as good quality DNA. And the last one was the lungs. Well, one long, and this one here is the one I had tested. And here's the same stuff. This is a, the same same fabric. Collagen is all the same. It's not the same. My goose has the same stuff. Every single thing that is made of collagen turned into aluminum silicates. Aluminum silicates created a, a membrane barrier between the lung and the rest of the world. Now, this one, the all the membrane came off of. This one's right down to the alveoli. These little holes here, all these little divots, that's where air flowed at one time through the, the lung. And what happened is this one here had all of the holes on it, just like this one is. All right, now this one though didn't fill up with silicates. This one just kept its, its constructive layer. All right, and all the holes opened up and they just stayed open. There's still a lot of blood in here. See all the red blood? But primarily, it, it's, it cleaned out all this blood, just drained out. Red blood basically just runs. In water, it just runs out. You know how water and blood, they just mix. Now, I've shown you what felspar looks like. This is on its way to being felspar. This is chicken. And I did this in the same mud fossil process, that, you know, the same conditions. And it took, oh, I don't know, maybe, let's say three, four months to get into this condition. It would continue worse and more and more and more invasively turning to stone. But at this point it's already started into felspar. All right, I'm going to leave it at that for now. Um, and again, this is sort of a um, just a commentary on what happens day by day. But we're going to take a regular a, a process of we're starting with electronics and the, the nature of how all of these things interact with each other because these are nothing more than molecules and different chemistry and if you don't understand the chemistry I don't care what you do after that you're done if you don't understand how these things bond together and and stabilize well, nothing else, nothing's going to make sense. So we have to start at the other. This, I wanted to throw this in today because the guy's getting a Nobel Prize for seeing these, these patterns of, of um, genetic patterns from our ancient extinct, apparently, relatives. Now, I don't know about either, these. Well, I know the stuff I had, the giants... 100% exactly identical human DNA in two regions of the mitochondrial mother's side DNA. That's all I wanted to know. Was it a human? And yes, they were. I don't have the complete human genome sequence from those. I don't know. There's got to be something different. But not in that region. It was mother's DNA is identical to ours. Identical. You know, I was looking up 
Svante here, and um, he's a pretty interesting guy. He's working basically the same things I'm working on, the ancient creatures that were here in search of lost genomes. I don't really care about the genomes. I'm interested in the creatures and what was written about them. Appears to be true. I mean, it's just spectacular, but something that's true is true. Now, the other things he does is he's doing a Neanderthal man in search of the lost genes and the E19 protein of adenovirus modulates the immune system. I'm deep into the immune system too and, and the DNA and how bacteria regulate your body. B bacteria is the only thing that makes any chemistry in your body. I'm going to try to get in contact with him or if you know Svante or anybody that's interested in the, the stuff I'm showing you. I have found very little reaction back to me because I was put on a bunch of spam lists and so forth and really tainted badly in the beginning um, and it's just never worn off <laughs> so you know I got what I got so if you can help help we need to get this understood I mean there's so much that needs to be understood it's just hard to understand <laughs>